Hello, I want to start off by doing a little bit of review. And so I have a snippet of code here and then some questions here at the bottom. And so what I'd like you to do is just pause the video and actually write down on paper what you think the answers to each of these are uh, before I go ahead and kind of talk through that. It's um, kind of when you're doing active learning and kind of making predictions, that's when things really sink in. If you just kind of watch me doing it, then you won't learn as much that way. So pause and I'll assume you're back now. So let's talk through this code. So what we have is that uh, we have two classes, right? We have the dog class, and I say class dog, and then inside of parentheses I say pet. And what that means is that dog is inheriting from the pet class. And the pet class has one method in it, a constructor. And it turns out that while well, the dog class also has a constructor in it, and, and so one thing I can see here is that this constructor and dog is going to override the one in pet. Right? So when I create a new dog object, this is the one that gets called. Now, I might also want to call the one in the parent class, the, the constructor there. And that's what we're doing. We're saying pet.init right here. And so that will ultimately mean that uh, both of these methods will get called when I create a new dog object. When am I creating a new dog object? Right here, I say pop equals a new dog, and then I'm kind of passing these things in. Okay, first question is, the parent class of dog is pet, and so does pet have a parent type? And if so, what is it? Well, first off, I'm not explicitly passing anything in, uh, but there's an implicit type. When I don't say what it is, then the type is object. Object is the name of... Um, of kind of the parent class of all other classes, perhaps confusingly, right? So the, uh, there is a type and that's, that's object. Okay, so second, how many arguments does line C pass, right? So when I'm kind of passing this in here and well, maybe I should also look at what's, uh, you know, what parameters I'm taking, right? So when this runs, the constructor is trying to run and I see there's three things there. And so hopefully the answer is three, because if it's not, well, then the code would crash, right? And it turns out that this code does not crash. And the reason is that, well, Sam goes to name, one goes to age, and well, what goes into self? Um, a new object, right? So here I'm getting a new, a new object. Right, so that, oh, excuse me, here I'm getting a new object. And, and so indeed I do actually get three things in because this is a special method and one of them is being passed in automatically for me. So I'm just trying to write that down here. Uh, so here I said object for the first, first answer. Oops, sorry, I can't type. Object, and then how many does uh, line C pass in? That's three. And then the next question, well, how many arguments does line B pass, right, when I'm calling this here? And I've gotten you so used to kind of counting the thing before the method, right? I guess, you know, we'll count the things in the method, so there'd be two there. And you might naturally think, well, this thing is going to be passed in as well, um, but it's not. And the reason is that pet is a class, right? It's not an object. If, if it were an object, it's not an object, but if it were, then pet would kind of go into that receiver variable. Um, it's not, so, you know, it's a class, not an object. So what that means is that self here will go to self there, and then name will go to here. And I'm not really doing anything special, special with pet. I just kind of use that to figure out what method I'm calling. So the answer here is that I'm doing two, right? So you, you see the difference, right? So sometimes, when I'm kind of calling a method and I put object.method, object goes into the receiver. When I say class.method, um, I'm not kind of doing any of that fancy extra passing of, of the receiver. Okay, so fourth question, the most complicated is, on another piece of paper, what do these frames look like uh, as I'm basically running this code? Okay, so, so let, let's take a crack at that. Um, and, and the first thing I really like to do when I'm kind of tracing through code like this, is I like to draw a boundary. And on the right, I may have my objects, like so. I have objects over here, 
And then on the left, I have frames. And inside of the frames, I'm going to have variables. So that's the situation. And I start off running over here, right? I'm running this line C. That's where kind of things begin. And for that, I'm going to have to create a frame, right? I, that code is running in the global frame, right? That's the global frame right there. And this doesn't quite happen yet, but eventually I'm going to be creating this pup variable. Maybe I'm drawing a little bit too soon, but I just want you to kind of think about uh, about that, right? So there's going to be that pup variable. And uh, at least that's what's going to happen after I create a dog object, right? So sometimes I'm drawing that there to see where we're headed. But first we have to create this dog object. And that happens automatically before the net method is called. So, so what does that mean? That means that over here on the right, I have a dog object. And uh, the dog object is going to look something like this. Um, it's going to look very similar to a dictionary where we have keys and values. Uh, but instead of keys and values, we're going to have attributes and attribute values, right? So it's a lot like a dictionary, right? That's what objects are like. And when I'm doing something like this, right? When I'm trying to create a new object, it creates that, and then it passes it to the init method. Um, and, and whenever we call a new function or a new method, that creates a new frame, right? So that's creating a frame here. And that is for the init method. And I guess I have two here, so I should really say, well, that's the dog dot init method. And that's running. And I can see that that method has three parameters. And so that's one of the first things I like to draw when I make a new frame, right? So, so I'll have self. I have name, and I have age. Okay, and each of those is a box, like so. And the self box is a reference to my new object. So it looks like that. Name is just Sam. And age is, is just one. Okay. So I'm running this. <clears throat> and the next thing I do is I say self.age equals age. Okay. So self.age takes me up here. Self. And I'm looking for a kind of an attribute named age. And there is none yet. So I'm creating this new age. And then I said it equals age, which is referring back to my my parameter here, right? So what is that trying to do? I may have age uh, equals one. Okay, just like that. And so I have my attribute uh, age and then my value one. Okay, great. So I ran this line of code and now I'm coming down here and I'm saying pet.init. Okay, so pet.init means that I'm going to create another frame like this. And, um, and this is a init again, right? So I'm going to say init. And, um, and this is pet.init. And, um, and in this one, I guess I just have the two parameters. I have self and I have name. Right, so I'm going to say self and then I have name and those are here and well what goes into these remember right pet is just a class so pet does not go to self right if this was an object it would but it's not it's a class so what goes to self up here this self so this first argument goes to this first parameter so what does that mean? That means the self in this frame should point to the same thing that the self in this frame points to. And so I get, oh, let me, let me kind of just keep the colors consistent. And so I get something like that. I have these two different things that are pointing to the same, uh, to the same uh, object. Okay, um, same thing for name. So name goes to here. And, uh, and so I'm gonna write down 
Sam over here. Just a little bit of an aside here. I, I'm kind of drawing it like Sam gets copied. And I'm doing that for simplicity to avoid drawing too many arrows. If I was really being precise, I'd have a string object over here named Sam, and then I'd have two arrows going to it. And that would be kind of like the most technically correct thing. But string objects are immutable. You can't change them after you've created them. So it's fine to kind of draw extra copies if it makes your picture simpler. It doesn't affect the, the kind of the behavior of your program. Okay, so far so good. So, so I'm in this init method. I'm calling self.name equals name. And so self.name, there is no name attribute yet. So I'm going to create it. I'm going to say, well, name equals name, which is Sam. And so I get Sam here. Okay, so that's the end of this method. So this method returns, and the method returning means that, you know, whenever a method or function returns, the frame it was using goes away. So this frame is gone. And then I'm back to here, I was running this. And then, well, since I'm going to return at the end of this, this one goes away. And now I'm all the way back to here. I'm going to finish running this, right? I, I did the right-hand side of this. I kind of called everything I needed to to populate my new dog object. And now I say pup equals that. And so the thing I get back is, is really that new object. It's almost as if the constructor had a return statement there. Right? That's kind of happening automatically. Right? So pup is going to refer to the same thing that the two selfs were, right? So what does that mean? That means pop is going to end up looking like this. And that's the final picture at the end of this code. And, um, and so what's helpful, right, when you're kind of confused about objects or classes is to draw a picture like this and then run the code in Python Tutor and see if you get the same thing. And that's kind of just a good way to check your mental model.